Last Tuesday at Manegle, I caught up with one of Harness Racing's true gentlemen. He's also an outstanding trainer driver in his own right and, of course, a Miracle Mile winner. There's many stories throughout Harness Racing and the galloping industry as well about a man and his horse. I caught up with Harry Martin and, of course, his horse, Double Identity. Harry, before we have a look at that marvellous association with your very good mate, Double Identity, let's talk about the present. How many horses do you have in work, Harry? Five. This. All doubles. <laughs> yeah, all doubles. Yeah, um, the littlest one's a yearling. Oh, I don't know if it's still a bloody yearling or two-year-old now. A little betting line. One, it's a half-brother to Double Encounter and Double Bliss. Goes very nice. Over the years, you've said to me on numerous occasions, you keep picking up every rock that you see, hoping there's another double identity under it. I don't think you'll ever find a horse like him again, Harry. I don't think so, but we'll keep trying. <laughs> what maintains your enthusiasm here, as far as harness racing is concerned, and the presence now of a new breed of trained to drive all these young kids in the stables? Yeah, but the young kids, most of them only want to drive, and we've got to have trainers, can't just have drivers, so I just like to be with them. You've given two in particular a very strong kick as far as their careers are concerned, Steph Flippiart and David Morris. Yeah, I, like, I don't like changing drivers, I don't, don't go along with that, but you know, they, they do a good job. Do you miss not being in the sulky? Well, I did for a while, but now I'm used to it. It's all right. Let's cast our minds back to December 23, 2000. You head to Canberra for the first time with double identity and you win $2,100. Did you, did you ever have an inkling what was to come? No, I didn't. And that day, the caller called Neil Day's horse the winner. because course, he, my horse could never handle the corners on Canberra very well. We straightened up and he just went like a machine and won. Pretty, pretty handy horse, that fella. At what stage of his career, then, Harry, you thought this is something special? Oh. Well, I, I didn't until he... He could sit in the death seat and it never worried him. He was always a tough fella, but his, his knee, hitting his knee used to worry me. You know, I didn't think he'd go as far as he did, but he, he could just learn to handle it. We fast forward 2002, November 29, we head to Harrell Park for the Mirga Mile. How were the levels of confidence? Well, it wasn't good when I draw the outside barrier, <laughs> but he went away like a bullet and had the sit, one one sit straight off, so I was that pleased in the run that it wasn't funny. It was very good. You're counting for a couple of nice horses, Smith Hat and Joe Fess. Yeah, well, he raced them all the time. There they was three arch enemies. And Neil Day's other one, I can't think what it was at present. But, yeah, he used to handle them too pretty well. And what Steve, they... used to, if Steve would say, what do you draw? <laughs> yeah, it was good days. At what stage did you think you had their measure? Oh, in the run, in the in the run, I thought he was a very big hope. It, it, you don't, he don't usually get that sort of a run. Like I don't know if you ever watched the Victoria Cup. Three seconds off the track record, and he was so motherless last, and won by three or four lengths. Just unbelievable run. That was a marvellous reception you received. It was a very popular win, as far as a, a fairy tale story of a man and his horse. Yeah. Well, I think the, the Miracle Mile Harold Park, the ovation there after that was absolutely tremendous. It was enormous. I wish it had happened again. <laughs> well, I never know, Harry. 146 starts for Double Identity, 51 wins, 39 places. Not all for you. 1.2 million prize money. Of course, he started out with Colin Grimson. Yeah, he did. He um, had a bad knee when I took over up the farm, and it took a while to nurse that back to health and a lot of different ways we shot him in front but all, the only thing that helped him was spread us on us till they looked like they're on a break and away he went Harry started his here as we mentioned for Colin Grimson at Menangle his first start was a win back in 1999 August two year old record two year old record yeah mm. he was pretty handy mm. yeah. unfortunately he ended his career at the end of the field in a race run by Smooth Cruiser but well, we will always remember him for the great champ he was and not for that particular run. Did you know that was the end of his yeah. career? Yeah, we knew before that. But, you know, you just don't discard the poor old fella. Uh, no, he, he let us know that he'd had enough. Uh, it, it, um, I reckon that I had another filly that 
give me just as big a thrill as he did. Resilience was a pretty handy filly. Mm. She won everything as a two and three year old filly. Uh, in fact, she she set me up in my house, that little one, so I always got a soft spot for her. She set you up and double identity added a couple of extensions. Yeah, he, he put the <laughs> extensions. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's about it. Harry, hey, we've had many of stories, great stories throughout the history of racing, both thoroughbreds and the standard bread, and your story with double identity is certainly right up there with them. Yeah, it was a, it, a lot to do with Helen. God bless her. She could lead him from his stable to the, across the jog track or the fast work track to his yard without a lead. She'd call him and he'd win to her to come and get him. And they, it was those two that made the friendship. Well, Harry, you've been a great friendship to Harness Racing for many, many years. It's always great to have a chat and reminisce about the good times and certainly with Double Identity, there were plenty of good times. They were. They were very good times, mate. Yeah. There might be some more around the corner. Who knows? <laughs>